Commercial real estate is making headlines right now for all the wrong reasons with impending doom on the horizon for many investors that have taken on overly aggressive financing structures or have been subject to significant drops in leasing demand as market conditions have shifted. And while timing the market is extremely difficult to do with any level of accuracy, there are some pretty compelling indicators that are pointing towards a specific time frame when all of this distress might come to a head and when the biggest buying opportunities might come up for commercial real estate investors. So in this video, what I want to do is talk through what the data are showing right now as far as when the bottom of the market is likely to materialize, why this might happen during this time, and how you can best position yourself to take advantage of these opportunities when they come up. So the vast majority of concerns around commercial real estate distress right now primarily center around two main things, floating rate loans, predominantly on multifamily assets, and huge decreases in leasing demand within the office sector. On the multifamily side of the equation, as of right now, although a lot of properties have been in the news for not being able to pay their debt service due to significant jumps in interest costs on floating rate loans, many of these operators are doing everything they can right now to hold on to these assets until valuations recover. This has led to extremely low transaction volume in 2023 so far, with US investment volume dropping to the lowest levels we've seen since the middle of 2020 and before then, the beginning of 2013. According to MSCI data, the gap in pricing expectations between buyers and sellers in the multifamily space specifically is the widest it's been since the beginning of 2012, with buyers looking to pay 11% less than sellers are willing to sell for, which has led to investors essentially waiting out the market and hoping for conditions to improve before selling their deals. But in many cases, these multifamily owners are up against the clock with upcoming loan maturities or interest rate caps expiring, which will either force these groups to refinance, most likely at significantly lower valuations, or deal with the consequences of material increases in interest costs that would materially reduce operating cash flows and require additional equity capital. And to zoom in on timing, according to CBRE data, multifamily transaction volume peaked in the fourth quarter of 2021, which according to Green Street's commercial property price index was exactly the same time when pricing started to peak and the market started to plateau. And since many short-term floating rate loans that were used to acquire these properties during the peak of the cycle came with loan terms of only two to three years in length, this means that many of these properties acquired in late 2021 and early 2022 are now about to have loans coming due in a very different interest rate environment than we saw two years ago with valuations that have also dropped substantially during this time. And according to CoStar data, these maturities appear to be just in their beginning stages with about $8 billion of multifamily CMBS loan maturities scheduled for October and November of 2023, or more than double the value of these maturities in the previous four month period. And even though maturities are scheduled to drop off slightly in the beginning of 2024, these are then scheduled to gradually increase again throughout the next 12 months to ultimately peak in January of 2025. This means that next year around this time, a lot of multifamily investors are going to have to have some hard conversations with their equity partners and ultimately decide whether they want to continue feeding a property that might be cash flow negative due to increased debt costs if they want to refinance a deal and infuse additional equity into the property to make that happen or if they want to let go of an asset completely by selling the property at a loss or giving the property back to the lender on the deal. And on the office side of the equation, this situation is looking very similar, but for slightly different reasons with valuations in this asset class dropping considerably over the last three years as demand for office space has dried up across the country. 
Unlike multifamily properties that saw record-setting, often double-digit percentage increases in asking rents in many markets in 2021 and 2022, office demand has been extremely sluggish since the start of 2020, and even assets that were acquired with fixed-rate loans as early as 2018 in many cases are going to see some really big challenges when these acquisition loans end up coming due. Even though many companies are making major pushes to get their employees back in the office, with huge tech firms including Meta, Google, Zoom, and Amazon each announcing more strict in-office policies in 2023, nationwide office utilization rates were less than 51% of their 2019 levels as of January of this year, and in the biggest white-collar employment market in the country, New York City, office utilization was less than 41% of its 2019 levels as of late August, and only 9% of the city's office workers were in the office for a full five days per week. According to the Mortgage Bankers Association, or MBA, as of January of this year, more than $400 billion of office loans were expected to mature by the end of 2025, meaning that these deals will need to be refinanced at, in many cases, lower valuations than when they were initially acquired and with significantly higher interest rates that will reduce loan proceeds. The bottom line for both of these product types is that even though there are a lot of headlines about distress in commercial real estate right now, we're likely not going to see the peak of distress sale activity until at least the middle of next year, and this is likely to continue steadily throughout 2024 and even into some of 2025. Unlike the public equities markets, which can see valuations drop by 20, 30, 40% or more virtually overnight, realized valuation changes tend to happen much more slowly in commercial real estate and distress tends to be much less acute with owners holding onto their properties as long as they possibly can until they're either forced to sell or their equity investors just aren't willing to continue to fund a deal. So with the stress potentially being spread out over the next 12 to 18 months, the logical question becomes, what can you do to position yourself right now to take advantage of these opportunities, especially if you're trying to land a job in this industry, ideally as soon as possible? And the first thing I would focus on is to use this time to connect with experienced industry professionals as much as you can, specifically before transaction activity starts to pick back up again. With interest rates being at 10-year highs, properties not being listed for sale, and those properties that are on the market being significantly overpriced in most cases, many acquisitions professionals, brokers, and lenders have some of the most free time they've had at any point during the last decade, which could make them much more likely to say yes to take time out of their day to talk to an aspiring industry professional. And aside from taking the time to build your network, now is also a great time to make sure that you have the skills you'll need to land opportunities when job openings do ultimately come up, meaning that now is the time to focus on building your technical skill set that can help make your resume stand out when applying for roles, and also to make sure that you can pass an Excel modeling exam that many companies will give you during the interview process. And when you do ultimately land an opportunity, this also has the added bonus of making sure that you can get up and running quickly on the job, which is going to be extremely important, especially if distress starts to pick up and interest rates start to fall at the same time, creating a huge uptick in transaction volume and a huge increase in your workload that you're going to need to manage. Even if you don't plan to work in the industry, if you're an investor, this is also a great time to make sure you're well capitalized going into the upcoming year, especially since many of these properties that have been struggling in recent months will either have deferred maintenance or deferred renovations that are going to require significant capital investments from the next buyer of these properties that need to be taken into account before these properties are acquired. Just like with any investment vehicle, it's really difficult to time the market overall, but what you can do is make sure you're prepared for when these opportunities do come up. And if you're looking for a job or trying to advance your career in the industry today, 
These are some of the things that I would recommend focusing on most right now to make sure that you are ready when opportunity strikes. And if you want to make sure that you have the technical skills you'll need to both land interviews and pass an Excel modeling exam that might be given to you when interviewing for analyst and associate roles at top commercial real estate firms, as always, make sure to check out our all-in-one membership training platform, Breaking a CRE Academy. A membership to the Academy will give you instant access to over 120 hours of video training on real estate financial modeling and analysis. You'll get access to hundreds of practice Excel interview exam questions, sample acquisition case studies, and you'll also get access to the break into CRE analyst certification exam, which covers topics like real estate pro forma and development modeling, commercial real estate lease modeling, equity waterfall modeling, and many other real estate financial analysis concepts that will help you prove to employers that you have what it takes to tackle the response responsibilities of an analyst or associate at a top real estate firm. And if you like this video and want to see more content on the channel on the state of the commercial real estate market, make sure to hit the like button and let me know. And let me know in the comments when you think peak distress is going to hit and what you're doing to prepare right now. As always, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more videos like this every single week. And I'll see you in the next video.